Madam Speaker, with your permission, may I take question 53 to 56 together as they are related? Yes, please. The members' concerns can be categorized into two broad themes. The first is a concern over the number of money lenders in the heartlands. The second is whether the government can do more to protect borrowers. Let me set the context for our reply. Overall, the amount of loans disbursed by licensed moneylenders constitutes less than 1% of the consumer credit market. The number of licensed moneylenders increased from 173 in 2008 to 249 in 2011. In 2012, the Ministry imposed a moratorium on new licenses, and no new licenses have been granted since. The number of licensed moneylenders has since decreased to 209 in 2012. The government agrees with the concern about excessive borrowing and credit being too accessible to borrowers. However, if legal access to credit is completely cut off, the consequences will be worse. Borrowers will be driven to seek loans from unlicensed moneylenders or other illegal sources. If people need money, they will try and find a way to borrow. We are all aware of the exploitation and harassment that these borrowers are subject to once unlicensed moneylenders enter the picture. Consequently, the government's approach is to maintain a balance in allowing borrowers reasonable access to credit from licensed moneylenders and providing them, especially those of lower income, with adequate protection. We have, enact we have enacted various safeguards that are aimed at achieving this balance. First, Moneylenders must meet several criteria before their licenses are granted. These include ensuring that they are of good character to manage the business and the placement of a security deposit to ensure the proper conduct of the business. Moneylenders found to have committed offences will have their licenses suspended, not renewed or revoked. Second, moneylenders are required to explain the terms of a loan to borrowers before granting the loan. These include the effective interest rate, or EIR, which make clear the true cost of the loan. Third, for borrowers with an annual income below $30,000, the EIR is capped at 13% for secured loans and 20% for unsecured loans. These correspond to the previous nominal interest rate caps of 12% and 18% respectively. There are also caps on the unsecured loan amounts for borrowers with annual income below $120,000. Fourth, moneylenders are required to explain all the contingent charges in the loan, such as late interest or late fees that are levied when a borrower is late in repayment. For borrowers with annual income below $30,000, moneylenders are prohibited from charging a late interest rate beyond the actual interest rate charge for the loan. As for late fees, these are currently not capped. However, moneylenders are required to disclose such fees before granting the loan so that any borrower who finds a particular fee objectionable can choose not to take up the loan. It ensures that the borrower will have the full facts before he decides to borrow. Nonetheless, fees charged on the loan is an issue which my ministry is looking at as the cost of borrowing is significantly affected by such fees. Finally, there is also in place stringent advertising rules which prohibit moneylenders from advertising and promoting their business through unsolicited, unsolicited communications. Given these rules, borrowers will generally, see, or will generally only see advertisements when they are actively searching for moneylenders. In essence, the issue is this. You have borrowers who want to borrow. They cannot borrow from banks. Can you prevent them from borrowing? by preventing them from going to licensed moneylenders. I would like to assure members that we are monitoring the money lending industry closely and where necessary, we will introduce further safeguards to protect borrowers. Aside from the issue of fees, my ministry is considering measures to complement the Monetary Authority of Singapore's recently introduced cap on unsecured borrowing from financial institutions and ensure that borrowers do not overextend themselves we are also reviewing whether interest rate caps should be extended to loans for higher income earners. At present, we have not imposed any limits on the number of money lenders in any geographical location. Singapore is not such a big country that travelling costs will effectively deter borrowing from money lenders. 
However, we will also review this position.